Hello and welcome to the November 21st, 2023 Select Board meeting. The entire Select Board is present along with the town manager and the town clerk, members of the public, assessors, HR. Um, let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First, we have the approval of our November 8th minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second a motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Coolio. Uh, first public comment. Um, okay. Uh, then I will close the first public comment. Uh, we have no public hearings, no reports, no department reports, no unfinished business. This is going to be a quick one. Town manager report. Uh, we sent out an RFP <coughs> for an auditor. Um, Lisa Vargas sent a letter to approximately 20 auditing firms. Uh, we received three letters, two um, declining to bid, and we actually received one formal bid from our existing auditor, RHR Smith & Company. Um, the bid amount for fiscal year 24 to 2026, amount of $14,700. From fiscal year 2027 to 2028, 15700 um, That's in tab 11. Um, there's an extra in there for a single audit. Good news is we received so much grant funding that we're about to spend that we need to have an additional audit on top of what we do. So tonight I am seeking a motion for approval tonight to keep RHR Smith & Company as our auditor until fiscal year 2028. So this went out to bid and both of these companies just declined to bid? They just sent an election. Mean, and actively, every other company declined the bid. Those two just were sent to courteous, were courteous enough to... They actually let you know they were not going to bid. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, award the bid to RHR Smith & Company as presented. A second. Any further discussion? Is how long have they been doing our... Uh, audits now has been quite a while, been right? At least, I mean, I want to say eight, eight years. years. Yeah, sounds about right. Well, they always do a good job. Yeah. They've kept us out of kept us out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? I had a, a bid meeting with uh, Mike Zarba, SL, SLR, their engineer firm for the Outfall Seven slash Great Falls project off Moulton Street. We had four contractors in attendance. It was a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting. It's good, good to have contractor interest. Bids are due December 12th and will be on the agenda for the 19th. And hopefully it's on budget. Uh, so for Town Hall Lobby Update, we've arrived at a color choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sea haze. It's a soothing gray with soft green undertones. We'll be working on unifying the trim. Right now we have all different trim colors. Um, and just overall clearing out some of the clutter in our lobby area and working on some of our interior decorating. You didn't want to go with the town bright orange logo? <laughs> We've considered many options, but <laughs> you have a popular <laughs> institutional more neutral color. Uh, there was an open space plan committee meeting last night, uh, well attended from all kinds of different stakeholders in the community. This project will include an inventory of open space we have already. It will include study of uh, future land for um, potential open space. It'll study habitats, farmland, 
and this project will integrate with the comprehensive plan and will incorpor incorporate ordinance amendments. CACs are transportation MPO, and MPO is Metropolitan Planning Organization, is kicking off a safety action plan. This is part of the Federal Highway Administration Safe Streets for All program. And incorporated with that is a Vision Zero, Vision Zero initiative, which means designing a safe system, transportation system with a goal of zero deaths. It's very aspirational, but all the major highway organizations um, and our regional planning organizations are making it a goal. So one of those components is safe speeds, safe streets. Um, so we know Route 4 um, has some safety issues. We have had one safety study already, and we're working on imp implementation of that already. So more to come on that. And we have a few uh, staff that have volunteered to be on that committee. So it's a region-wide committee, and we have representation from Burwick. And the last thing I have, the tree was put up today. The tree lighting is December 1st at dusk, and the parade is December 2nd at 1.30. So far, I've heard positive feedback that people like that it's actually split up into two nights or parade and, and tree separate. So yeah, some of the feedback, was, some of the feedback I heard was especially with like some of the days where it's been colder that after the parade or families uh, that have been out there all day just as much as they want to don't, don't just stay. don't stay. Well, my, so, my thought was just like people that want to be at the tree side, the tree lighting but don't want to be at the parade, there's nowhere to, for them to park because there's cars in the line of the whole yep. road forever. So, um, <laughs> Do we have an update on the playground? Is that all done? Playground, they're wrapping that up. Um, they're putting some final touches on that. The engineered wood fiber was uh, layered and compacted by a, a skid steer. So they they put in a layer, compacted it, and then put another layer. Um, I, I believe that they're wrapping up this week. If they're not done, they're wrapping up this week. They had a few, uh, like one of the fa remaining last pieces they have to install. So did they decide they weren't going to do the final paving until spring? It, both, both. So the um, actually on the tennis slash pickleball court, the fence posts are up, and we're just going to wait on paving for both the base and the final paving for both courts in the springtime. Any other questions for the town manager? Anything else for us? Yeah, that's it. That completes my report. Terrific. Uh, Select Board Communications, we have a notice from Xfinity, Comcast, that starting December 20th, 2023, their prices are going up. Again, no. a range of anywhere from $0.13 cents to $6, depending on what kind of package you have or what kind of additions you like. <clears throat> That's not news, but it's happening. Um, accounts payable. All right, payroll warrant number 31 from November 16th, 2023 in the amount of $79,059.43. Payroll warrant number 32 from November 16th, 2023 in the amount of $501.22. $501 payroll warrant number 33 from November 22nd, 2023 in the amount of $86,738.76. And accounts payable warrant number 34 from November 21st, 2023, in the amount of $285,564.34. I will make the motion that we pay our bills. No second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Keep going. All right. New business. Water upgrade contract bid results. <laughs> Don't all get up at once. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to come uh, speak to you about the project. I know um, Maine Water provided an update to you folks two weeks ago. Uh, we had opened bids, did a public bid process um, uh, following the drinking water SRF requirements. Um, Four bids were received on October 31st. Um, I believe your packet should have a bid tab. 
and should have uh, the award recommendation letter. Um, we are recommending award to the low bid, which is Apex Construction, based in Summersworth, New Hampshire. Um, we uh, reviewed the bid results for the Maine Drinking Water Program, the funding agency, which is the state revolving fund through the Maine Bond Bank. They concurred with our recommendation and checked all the, we checked all the boxes with the process of uh, procuring under their requirements. So some of the requirements to the funding are um, attached to the funding are uh, contractors got to do certified payrolls, uh, Davis Bacon wage rates, and that's part of the contract. Uh, American Iron and Steel is a requirement of the funding uh, for this project. So that impacts lead time of equipment uh, to ensure that we get American Iron and Steel requirements. That applies to uh, the under drain system that's going to be part of the, the, the filter upgrade and the blowers um, and any of the piping for connecting the pumps and the pipe gallery. Um, so we've been working kind of collaborative collaboratively with Maine Water Company since they took over operations uh, back in February, I guess it was. Obviously, there was some initial difficulty <laughs> when they first took over with uh, the filters and really uh, the outcome of, um, you know, once we were able to stabilize or Maine Water was able to stabilize the filters, we identified uh, the under drains are really plugged up with manganese and they could not be uh, uh, fixed. They're over 20 years old. so. We kind of, in collaboration with Maine Water, we kind of reprioritized um, uh, this contract one in consultation with the drinking water program to make sure that we could, you know, address the, the filter issues moving forward. Now that things are stabilized, we have time to fix the filters for the long term and also upgrade the blowers, which go back to 1998. So a field blower motor was, was the other part of the problem that occurred with the filters back in, I think it was February and March. Um, and then we have the pumps, um, the existing pumps that the town purchased last year that are going to be installed under this contract. And at the same time, uh, we're going to replace the other set of pumps, uh, raw water and finished water. Um, so moving forward, we are going to be, um, if assuming the board um, concurs with our recommendation and, a, and we can award to Apex Construction, uh, that will start the, the ball rolling on getting equipment ordered. Um, in, in getting that first contract complete. Um, we are, I am planning to meet with Maine Water uh, and probably James either next week or the week after to talk about priorities for um, the next part of the, the upgrade. Uh, now that Maine Water's had an opportunity to really get familiar with the system, um, I really want to get their input um, as we move forward. Um, so um, I would anticipate the next time, you know, Either myself or Maine Water provides an update. We'll have a, a better handle on uh, direction we're going, you know, with the remaining work over there. The good news is, um, with the the rainfall, the high rainfall that we experienced this year, uh, the manganese levels have been very low. I've been in consulting with the uh, Maine Water Company, and um, and basically the manganese levels have been uh, very manageable, unlike two years ago when the drought conditions allowed the manganese to release from the river causing uh, significant water quality issues. And what happened with that, um, that also plugged up the filters, which resurfaced, um, you know, in February. It was kind of a surprise, but it was a long-term issue that was building. So moving forward as part of an operational uh, plan, Main Water, um, you know, they're going to have an SOP um, to do uh, chemical cleanings of the clarifier to, to help reduce you know, the buildup of manganese over time. And then as part of our, our work, we're planning a, a third blower because um, there's two existing blowers. If one blower goes down, um, there's no redundancy for the second blower, which is needed for the filter backwash. So that is something that we've identified and we're starting to address with this first contract. So with that, I guess I'll uh, entertain any questions. I don't have any immediate questions. Uh, uh, I reviewed the bid from Apex, and it seems that they are more than qualified to yep. handle this situation. And, and you know, compared to the other bids that are twenty percent more, I, I don't feel like there's any any significant justification to go any other way. 
I agree, and uh, Wright Pierce has done many projects with Apex. Most re recently, we just wrapped up a project with them in Bangor, Maine, a booster pump station. They, they are a very good contractor. Um, I have had no bad experiences working with them. Uh, again, we've done many millions of dollars of projects. Um, very, very good company, very capable. Any other comments or questions? Um, I, I you know, is not a real concern, but is because of the being so much lower, is, uh, <clears throat> is things like labor costs and things yeah. are pretty standard. Is I'm just concerned that equipment, <coughs> equipment prices seem to be so much lower for some of these units than the other bidders. Is um, you know, I'm just kind of concerned about why that is. You know, is you know where where you know we have Apex furnishing something for ten thousand dollars, and then you know the next lowest one is twenty seven thousand dollars for right. the same unit. Yeah. Right. So on the on the under drains and the filter media, because it's a proprietary treatment process, um, we did. Um, get permission from the drinking water program um, to basically kind of sole source that equipment. So the bid documents as um, the, uh, so the, the, the vendor provided the same bid to each one of the contractors. The contractor had to look at it and decide what they wanted to put on it for a markup and then obviously, you know, their approach to doing the installation. Um, you know, looking at the bids, there is a spread and it's not unusual. Um, I think the good thing is that there were four bids. Um, the hard, hard situation is when you get like two bids, and one is really high, and one is really low. You're like, oh, what did they miss? Um, I can, you know, based on our estimate, we, going into this, we had estimated about four hundred thousand, you know, three seventy-five to four twenty-five. So, I, I feel like Apex's bid. I don't think, you know, in talking with them, we have spoken with them, we've reviewed their bid. We don't believe they missed anything in their bid, and we're pretty confident they got the bases covered. Um, so I, I, th I think it's a, uh, a competitive bid process. Uh, but again, I'm not surprised at some higher bids. Um, we, we oftentimes see that. Um, yeah, I, I, I worked in the construction field, and so, yeah, yeah, people bid things if they don't want it, the job, you know, is yeah. uh, bid them high. It, it, like I said, it's not a real concern. I was just, you know, th those things kind of stand out for me, that's yep. all. Is um, but um, I've seen Apex around, you know, over the years and stuff. Is I've never heard anything bad about them. Yeah. Is I don't have a problem with them. You know, just trying to get some clarification. Yeah, and I personally worked with them uh, going back to 2010. We did a project. Um, um, I think it was a seven million dollar water treatment plant project in Maine, and they did a great job. And, and now uh, Heath Todd is now the president. Back then, he was working for his father. Um, so they have a, a good track record of um, continuity with their superintendents. Um, you know, we're working with superintendents' kids now that are now superintendents at Apex. Um, so it's it's really a good company. So. If there are no other comments or questions. I'll entertain a motion. I guess. I'll make a motion that we award the bid for the water treatment plant upgrades to Apex Construction for the amount of $448,200. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Let's right. get it done. Well, thank you very much and happy Thanksgiving. Yep. Yes, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get some clean water. <laughs> we have clean water. Let's keep it. <laughs> Uh, personnel policy. Hello. Hi. Um, do you want to just, I'll just introduce myself. Please. Does that work? Okay. Um, Betsy Olton from HR Main Consulting, and um, you all know Cassidy, I believe. Yes. Um, so uh, just right. to start out, um, James hired me, I don't know, uh, several months ago, I guess, uh, to... Uh, just to review your um, handbook, as you may or may not know, laws are changing sort of all the time. And so it used to be you'd have an employee handbook and, you know, you could review it every so many years. And now we really try to look at them every year, um, especially with all the sort of changing uh, laws. And what we did in this process, just so that you know, is um, uh, James uh, Cassidy, myself, and Lisa Vargas, um, 
you know, reviewed uh, the sections together. I made recommendations um, based on some of the, some of this. A lot of this is existing language that was um, that seemed appropriate for your needs here in Berwick. Um, and then once we sort of came to a consensus, we also asked the department heads to look at it. I think we gave them about a week to just review it and see if there's anything that you know maybe they had concerns or needed. Um, clarifications or maybe you know we missed something and then we um, once we sort of went through that process then we went then we uh, also sent it out to the employees I, I, I firm believer in making sure that everybody has input uh, when we're um, reviewing um, an employee personnel handbook so that was the process and what I typically do and it's uh, I, I sort of take your lead I guess is there is a summary sheet that I thought we, you know I would just go down and um, indicate what has been changed or updated and then uh, answer any questions uh, or we can jump into questions, whatever you folks prefer. I think it might be helpful for you to just kind of go through some of the sure. outlining changes. Sure. Like Karen. Okay. So uh, the very beginning, and uh, um, Cassidy has your original one here in case we have to refer back to it. But um, So we went through, we remo removed the gender clause and put they and them in there throughout the document instead of his or her. Interestingly enough, tonight I'm looking at it again, and I see a his slash um, her in here that we'll need to correct. So that's why, you know, many eyes is always helpful for these types of documents. So I'll make sure that's corrected. Uh, we changed the board of selectmen to select board. <clears throat> Uh, section 2.4, uh, the disability accommodation, you already had one in there, which was great, but we updated it to include the Pregnant Fair Work Workers Fairness Act, a new law that came into effect in 2023. Um, section 2.5, we just, you had a um, storm closing absence policy. We, we essentially took a lot of the appendixes out of the appendix and put them into the body of the handbook as, you know, you sort of, you know, it just makes more sense in, in flowing that way. So that's what we did there. Um, under, if I'm going too fast, t tell me to slow down. Um, section 2.7, workers' comp protocol and procedures. We just updated it to include sort of a re reporting process, uh, making sure that we have modified duty and return to work, uh, and information on pay and benefits at the time if there is a workers' comp uh, claim. I know that MMA, um, particularly your workers' comp insurer, um, prefers that we have um, and asks that we have the return to work and modified duty um, portion in the employee handbook, so we included that. Section 3.5, we just updated the department head positions uh, to be current. Section 3.4, um, so the trend that I'm seeing, uh, especially most, uh, what I forgot to say is 99% um, of my clients are municipalities or quasi-municipalities, so because it's very different than the private sector. Um, and so what I was seeing sort of in the probationary period, most private sectors don't have a traditional probationary period, but public sectors do. Uh, there's typically a six-month probationary period, and at that, uh, a lot of municipalities sort of before we entered into this, you know, sort of crazy recruitment um, scenario uh, in the in the world, um, we're holding back um, people using any type of leave until their six-month probationary period advanced. The earned paid leave law then came into effect, which said you have to allow them to use their time um, in, um, after three months, not after six months. But the trend that I'm seeing is, you know, we certainly, we've learned from COVID, we don't want people to show up to work sick. Um, so we are um, just removed that sort of, um, you know, uh, requirement. And, you know, we look at it that, you know, people have, can start accruing from the date of hire. And if they need to use the time, they can put in the request to use it if it's vacation. And they can certainly call out sick and be paid for it. And that we want to encourage that uh, behavior. So we have a question regarding to that. So when it's hourly employees, they're accruing the time, even though right. they're in their probationary period. Yes. From so at this point, then, there won't be any safeguards in place for when you first come on board the first 30, 60, 90 days. I know what you're saying about the trend, but it's one thing to call in sick. We don't want anyone to come to work sick. But what if somebody starts here and then two weeks later they ask for 
vacation time. So we could. So you always have the department has always have the right to deny vacation time, regardless of whether you're probationary or not. And I would certainly encourage that. You know, this is also set into motion for a lot of times when you hire somebody and they say, "Oh, gee, I already had a week planned vacation. Would you honor yeah. that type of thing?" So um, department heads always have that, and the town manager has all the right to to deny that. So. And they also, also, they also need to accrue the time too. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that makes a difference. Yeah. But they also, need. they're in the probationary period. So if they are abusing the system, then, then they're not going to be have right. recourse. And you, then you want that on there. I, yeah. I was thinking of it more from a discriminatory thing. What if one department leader is like, sure, you, you've built up a couple of days, you want to take a couple of days off because this is coming short, but another department leader does it. When you don't have a set policy and you leave it to the discretion of many. Yeah. That's where you tend to get some unbalance. I'm not opposed to this. I'm just yeah. bringing that point up. Yeah, no, good point. I think some of these things can't be helped because a department a department may not be able to manage, you know, two people out of vacation at the same time, regardless of how long they've been here. And sometimes it does become a department issue in terms of operations. So, you know, as you know, again, uh, making sure that the department heads are all on board with understanding, you know when it's appropriate to deny vacation time and it would have to be you know because it's a significant operation issue or three other people have a day the same day off and they can't take it or or whatever so thank you for more than that it's someone's yeah. brand new yeah they need that transitional time to be here to be focused to be learning the job yeah um so you want them here unless of course they're sick then yeah no i think it's really for purposes of again um just allowing that the opportunity to and and I think if you know if if somebody comes on board and they're hired you know and they say you know I have this vacation time that's that's there for them so um, that was just my recommendation um, so section three uh, four we updated the exempt positions that were currently in there uh, 3.5 was the uh, your nepotism what was again an appendix put back in the section um retired main pers rehire we just updated it to coincide with the police contract with a few minor edits um 3.8 uh we talked about so going back to the probationary period what what you folks are using now james just remind me i think i'm correct in this but i provided a uh, probationary period, you know, we all understand that to be an at-will sort of environment for that period of time, but we still, you know, need to make sure that we're meeting with our employees and documenting. So I developed this one-page form, which is a two-month, four, uh, two four-month check-in that the supervisors have to sit and meet with their employees during that probationary period. And then we talked about, and James was on board with sort of a, a different type of a performance review, if you will. It's more about performance management, and it's a system where after their six-month uh, probationary period, then every six months they meet with their manager, and there's a questionnaire they get ahead of time to either fill out or just be prepared to meet and talk about what are things that you could do better, what do you, where do you think you can improve, what are your goals for your, for your career, and those types of conversations versus a sort of a, you know, a, a corrective action type of review um, with the intent and idea that when somebody when there needs to be a, a correction made it happens when that occurs so that's what um, and it's not you know it's it's not put in full detail in the handbook but there's a a blurb about that if you will so training was already provided to department leaders we we trained um, I don't know a couple months ago we had that rollout with the Performance management. I can't remember when it was, Linda, but yeah. Okay, no, that's good. <clears throat> uh, section four, one, again, just we updated employee conduct and public relations. There were just some words in there that were sort of, you know, um, outdated and things like that that I updated and also just moved back into the body of the handbook. Same with harassment and discrimination policy. Um, Outside employment, it's still in there. It's just covered under section, it doesn't say it here, but it's covered under section 4.2. Basically what it had said was um, 
that we could require an employee to terminate their outside employment and we really have no control over we can say that you know if it interferes with your full-time work here but the sentence in there said we could basically terminate them from their outside employer which we don't have any power to do so I removed that <clears throat> um, technology use again that's an updated policy with all of the uh, you know tech new technology that we have um, that continues to be updated as well as social media those policies were again in your appendix we moved them into the body of the of the document Vehicle use policy, we updated it. Essentially, you have a very specific vehicle use policy for each of your departments. We sort of we left that alone, but we did include requirements on safety and reporting accidents to ensure that people, um, you know, followed that protocol. Um, lunch break, rest break periods and breaks. There were there were examples of suggestions on things. <laughs> Are you laughing about that? Yeah. There were there were some certain like you know suggestions on what your break should be used at, and we just you know thought that that was probably not a place that we should that an item that we should put in there. So, um, we did remove mutual agreement to change work schedules. It, previously, it it sort of said that the employees. And the and supervisor had to agree on changing work schedules, and that's really a management right to be able to make those decisions. So we removed that mutual agreement section. <clears throat> Overtime. Um, so some some places. Um, I don't know what you folks do uh, in the county, but some places will include things like if you're out sick, that will go toward your 40 hours, so that you can, if you work over 40, you get. Um, Overtime, some places use vacation, whatever. Um, we have changed the paid time status to only allow overtime after an employee actually works 40 hours. Yeah. Actual work. Okay. We have created direct deposit, making that mandatory now. Um, I don't think, I think there are very few people that, um, you know, that immediately affected, but that's now mandatory. Uh, 6.3 discipline and corrective action we somewhat updated that mostly the same sort of uh, progressive discipline um, and verbal counselings um, 6.3 6 .3, and then the grievance process is 6.4 let me just double check uh, Do you have the 6.8? Okay, yeah, 6.3 is, sorry. Discipline and corrective action, and then 6.4 is the grievance process. Okay, so you just, okay. And we didn't change um, much on the discipline and corrective action. Um, that's your original language. Um, what we did, um, and now I can't remember if it was here or not, Linda. Um, in terms of some of the some of the things that Linda brought to my attention, which was great, and I appreciated that, was that um, you know we do have human resources here. Um, what we have said to sort of leave uh, the town manager out of sort of the weeds of um, the. the these actions is that if people have complaints that they are to report it to HR and if Cassidy needs assistance with that she will reach out to me but it goes to her first um, and so then there'll be a determination whether there might be an outside investigation that has to happen or, or or whatever the case may be so that was a big change and I appreciate that Linda and I think that just should be noted that that's done to um, protect the neutrality of the, of the town manager yes so that when that process is done if the employee wants an appeal or whatnot they can then go to the town manager and he can look at it independently yeah either way yeah yeah yep um i don't think we did anything different with your smoking and tobacco use we just embedded it back into the um handbook um in the infectious diseases and exposure control, um, we removed it and placed it um, into the safety manual. I just felt it belonged there instead of in this personal handbook. Um, your alcohol and drug policy, again, removed in the appendix, put it in here. 
um, paid time off. So you'll see, you, you may have had some questions about why sort of I listed the paid time, paid time off and then vacation and sick and all of sort of those um, categories. And we did that because you have union contracts some union contracts have vacation and sick, some, you know, and so then the non-union have PTO, and so some of these policies, you know, are going to affect everybody, so that's why that language is in there. Um, and, the, and again, the paid time off piece uh, was removed requirement to wait until after probationary period, which is similar to essentially the vacation. Um, change to PTO um, runs concurrently with family medical leave, not waiting until after the PTO runs out. I think your old policy just didn't run it concurrently. Um, and so those of you who don't know, family medical leave um, should always be run concurrently if the person is eligible with any accrued time that people are taking off as a result. So we removed um, all of these personal days, vacation, annual, and sick leave were all um, were, were all just specific to the cl collective bargaining agreement, so we didn't feel a need to put in put it in here. We only have in the so anything that sort of conflicts with the employee handbook, the collective bargaining will supersede. So that typically covers you know any of their time pay time off. So I didn't see the reason to have to list that all. We've Otherwise, we would be listing all of their full contracts into the personnel handbook. So that's why those are removed. Um, so I did remove the, we did remove the Section 8 PTO transfers. And so that was sort of the old-fashioned sick bank, if you will, or, or before sick bank. So <clears throat> it's common practice a lot in a lot of municipalities where if they know somebody is an employee is sick, Another employee will say, hey, I've got extra PTO. I'm going to donate it to this person. Well, the problem then becomes, what if you don't like this person and nobody donates time to them and all of that? So we try to remove those um, transfer policies because they're not really overseen by anybody. If you wanted to do something like that, and we discussed it and we decided we really there wasn't really that need for it, um, was you would need to set up a sick bank um, which would, there's all kinds of sort of, you know, <laughs> yep. um, oh, yeah. it, there's a lot of regulations involving that. So we just didn't see the need for it, especially, you know, these folks do get a lot of paid time off. There's also the availability of short-term disability for non, you know, non-work related injuries. And there's also workers comp. So we left that out. Um, Again, family medical leave just updated it to include sort of, you know, how does the benefit work? Uh, another great catch that I didn't know that Linda caught for us was um, the, the, there was language, and it's in a lot of um, actually personal handbooks, where if you are out on leave and you don't um, pay your portion of your health insurance benefits, then we can essentially stop your coverage. Um, and that was, um, you know, Right, if you're on FMLA, you can't stop the coverage. Right. Once they clear FMLA, you can. if they fail to pay at 100%, then you can shut their coverage off. Right. But we can't before then, and so right. that's when we, we made that change in that sentence. So um, this particular military family leave was a separate sort of called out section, and it actually is part of the Family Medical Leave Act, so it, that's where it is located. Am I missing a page? Oh, here it is, sorry. Um, so you associate that the 8.9 leave, leave without pay remove this section? Is that? Where, where is it? 8.9. 8.9. You just did the military family leave. So the next one is leave without pay, and it says remove this section. So there's no... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so let's see. What was that on... If we look up the old one. Bear with me a second. Um, oh, because there's no mechanism for just unpaid leave besides family medical leave. That's what we removed. Okay, so my question with that becomes... 
there's no guidance then if somebody has three months of FMLA and the doctor says that they're going to be back in 10 days. What do you do for those 10 days? You put them on a personal leave of absence, which is basically unpaid leave. It's another word for unpaid leave. And then the stipulation with that would be you can, the discretion of the department leader request to the town manager would be, okay, you can be on a personal leave of absence for up to three months, but the conditions apply. You don't get holiday, you don't accrue time, and you have to pay your benefits at 100% while you're out on that, after six months, an employment decision is made by the man. Yeah, I think we, I think the reason it wasn't for, let's just, if you, do you have one second yeah. for me yeah, to read? Sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, so I think we might want to amend it. And the reason I removed it was because it made it sound like such leave will not exceed one year in length. And I, I was reading this as sort of um, a couple of, a couple different things. But I do think we need something in there. I'm just going to have to reword it. Somebody could be on workers' comp, you know, for four or five, six months, and we fully expect them to return. But there needs to be a mechanism beyond FMLA. Yeah, and there's also... You know, if you have an, a year put out, the, you also have to be careful too. Where if somebody could never come back to work, at, but you've got to hold their job open for a year, then you have no way to be able to replace them either. Right. So, so yeah. it's usually yeah. a, the FMLA is three months, yeah. and then three the months of uh, you that know that at which point right. yep. the yep. six month mark has now been hit. Six months in a day. Yeah. You then start reviewing what the next steps are. Whether it's a reasonable accommodation or right. A, yeah, right. What, what other things apply? Doesn't this come, a person on unpaid family medical leave, comma leave of absence, comma or extended sick leave shall not be entitled to holiday pay? Right, but she said Correct, she took but, that out. But she took the unpaid leave section out, so there's no. But, yeah. I mean, this is in the updated version, right, or is this the old version? Does it say is it section eight point nine? It's mm -hmm. section eight point one under cha uh, chapter eight, chapter eight. 8.1 holidays, the next page yeah, so says, that line only a person on unpaid yeah. family leave, leave of absence, or extended sick leave shall not be entitled to holiday pay. Correct. That's Correct. that's the holiday pay section, but yeah. there's no unpaid leave section. Yeah, but I mean... So, so, like yeah. so when you when But I mean, it does yeah. specifically when you say there is mechanism for leave of absence or it's referring to, it's referring yeah. to, to so a what? policy that that i took out it's referring to a policy i took out so all so right so we'll so correct that you're saying that, that what you did that leave of absence is now undefined in the it's policy right. yeah, yeah got it okay so, so i just will amend, amend it okay i'll right. send it over yeah. okay thank you yep um it's it, this section called it reserve service leave. I changed it to military leave because it includes all forms of military service. Um, bereavement leave was the other one where we removed the requirement of the completion of probationary period. So if there is a death in the family and you know it's legitimate and they need a day off, they get it during the probationary period. Um, I removed the earned paid leave, the whole earned paid leave law. I removed that whole policy under this handbook. And what we do is we hand out, I don't know if you do the same thing, but we hand out the earned paid leave policy to all the um, seasonal, you know, not regular, during uh, orientation. you know, d f during orientation because. Otherwise, it looks like, if you don't word it correctly, that you're giving extra time to people who already get paid time off or vacation or sick. And so what we are only required under this new law of 1-1-2021 is to ensure that either our vacation, our sick, or our PTO com is compliant with the law. And if it is, we can put a, we put a statement in there that says that this section complies with the earned paid leave law, but what it doesn't cover are the people that now right. we have to then provide earned paid leave that we never had to do before, which are these sort of some firefighter call-ins, some, you know, there's a whole Reserve employee. host of employees yeah. that we now have to provide this earned paid leave to um, as a result of the 1-1-2021 law. 
Um, just updated language and the benefits, nothing, nothing that made any di difference, just language. Um, main purse, you folks actually have the, um, you went before, whoever you had to go before, to get the um, open enrollment period for main PERS, main state retirement. And so we just made sure we added that language in there that you, there is a one time chance to enroll um, during an open enrollment period. So you have that option. I added it in. Um, this was a section I just didn't really quite understand. I'm sure there's a story behind it, but sec section 10.2 deductions, there was called out deductions for payment of Berwick property taxes and a property tax club. Um, and cellular phone payments, and I think it was probably a mechanism where people could have their bills paid by their by the salary through the town, and that's just never a good practice. So I removed it. Was anybody taking advantage of that policy? I think one person was, and then I that would probably be a Lisa question. I think one person used to, and then left. Maybe the the tax. I mean, I've never heard anybody. It's never. There come was up, there so. was somebody who was getting there. They were on the tax club, and every single week we'd print a paper check and bring it down to Patty, and they'd huh. pay their taxes through. Yeah, we had quite payroll. a few. I don't think there's anyone currently on Left, that program. Yeah. Hmm. It just seems like an administrative nightmare, to my, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. So there's no way on it. So by changing the policy, we're not directly affecting any current employees. Correct. Okay. And I think we checked on that too because we would have. Wanted to have grandfathered that person. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, this. Is, so the only thing in your appendix right now is the substance abuse testing procedure, which is predominantly for CDL drivers um, through the federal government. So there has to be a requirement for that, um, and that's the whole appendix. That when you do hire somebody that's required to have a CDL, they would have to. They're obviously going to get a copy of the personnel handbook, but we would have them sign off on that specific um, policy as is required by the law. And I, that is, that's it. Do other towns have every important bill, or, or just the CDL drivers? Say that again. Do other towns have every employee drug test, or just the? No, they don't the anymore because no. of the. You know, because of the main law with yeah. uh, marijuana, it just doesn't make sense. There is reasonable suspicion that we can certainly act upon if, you know, we have um, MMA provides training for uh, people to learn, you know, how to detect if somebody, um, if there's suspicion, and we can go through that process <coughs> if there's, but we don't, we don't typically drug test and yeah. anymore. Yes. Yeah. It is process. Especially in Maine. Yeah. Can I go back to 3.4, the probationary period? And I only ask that because it may be in the CBA, the police CBA, but I'm not sure. <coughs> so I'm just looking for clarification. So the probationary period has been removed completely? Or is there a probationary period? It, should, it shouldn't have been. So removed requirement to wait, okay, before to use that. So what is the probationary period? For a regular employee compared to a law enforcement or fire? Six months. Everyone is six months? Yep. So for clarification purposes, law enforcement... Except for law six, enforcement. Is it six... Right. I was going to say... No, it's a year after they graduate from the academy. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Is that yep. stipulated in their CBA? I, I am almost 100% sure, but we should probably double check that. Because if I, not, it should be in here. Yeah. It should be in here anyways. Yeah. Just to reinforce that. I can put that in. Yep. Just because there's confusion sometimes about, sure. well, my date of hire was this, right. but it's a year post-graduation. Right. Yep, I'll put that in. Okay. See, I knew we'd have it on the December agenda. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, there has to be some edits. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> and then, I mean, so I can let someone else talk. The only other thing that, like I said, I, I gave some suggestions ahead of time. The only thing that I that she changed that I really do appreciate is the fact that we spent quite a bit of time discussing approving in the budget and hiring um, our, our HR representative, it's really important that that is reflected within the policy manual that employees, you know, are designated to go to HR to ask these benefit-related questions. I understand the position didn't exist 
prior to hiring Cassidy, but in order to, if this is a policy manual to move forward, it should be included in there to direct people to the appropriate place. And I just want to reemphasize when it comes to like harassment cases, things like that, understand that um, Cassidy's new, it doesn't, it doesn't prevent her from saying, going to James and saying, I got this relatively big case, and sort of speaking of it broadly, asking for guidance about right. should I get someone from the outside, should I help? I'm just saying that it separates him from getting in the weeds so right. that he can have that neutrality. It doesn't mean, oh, geez, we can't tell James. That's not what it means. Mm -hmm. It just means... Unless James is involved. Which <laughs> well, case, yeah. which then we case, can't tell him there's a different group that needs to go. To but work. that way that there's some protection for both the employee yeah. and the town to say that when it's done and you want to review it, there's that accusation of, well, he was prejudiced to begin with. No, because I was not hands-on. Mm -hmm. May have provided some guidance to HR, but I didn't... It wasn't me doing the interviewing. It wasn't me doing yeah. that kind of stuff. So I think that's a matter of oops, sorry. protection. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I kind of jumped on you. And I was just going to say it's the same thing, too. So James isn't the one making that decision. And if someone's, right. if someone's appealing yep. that part, if he's the appeal. You know, he's so it's, you know, right. there's, there's somebody else there that's, he's got that authority to appeal or to oversee the appeal without being the one that was involved in it. Yeah, and we're actually, we talked about this a little bit um, today, too, is we, you know, we really need to make sure that department heads and employees understand that mechanism. So going forward, it's a, it'll be a change for them, you know, so that when there, there's a protocol, when there are, you know, issues and things that they need help right. for, they, they need to really start there. Right. And usually what we were talking about, too, is oftentimes, and Linda probably sees it a lot, too, is sometimes people want to go to HR um, to help resolve a minor conflict between them and their supervisor. And usually what I pr provide are strategies for them to do it themselves. Right. Um, because a lot of times people want HR to sort of, you know, take care of all their problems in the workplace. And so, um, yeah, so we're having, we're going to be having some of those trainings too, just to understand, you know, as an employee, how do I handle sort of any sort of a conflict? So once this is, you know, all done, we plan for a rollout and a training and all of that. Great. Great. I think you uh, did a great job. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, edits? I got a couple of typos. I'll just email them. Please email them to me. <laughs> so, it's so know, hard to not there. catch just, every no, typo. No, I'm sure there's, there's plenty of pages. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yes, please. And, and I missed please. it the first couple of times, too, and I'm like, oh, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I brought it up last week, but Monday at 000, zero, zero uh, hours through Sunday 2400 hours is the same time. Yeah, I know. I fixed that. I didn't know so that. So it's, 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 yeah, it's 23, 23 59, 59, 59, 59, 59. Whoever brought that up, I fixed it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Numbers aren't my thing, okay. just so you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we will table this until next meeting when we'll have the fully revised, all the typos and things done, and we can vote on approving it. Because otherwise, otherwise, I think it's... Great. We looked at it for six weeks. We've looked, we've looked at it so many times now. I know. I'm so I, sorry. I, mean, I was sick no, two no, no, different no, times. No, no, no. <laughs> we, 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 we've caught everything, hopefully, Excellent. by now. So Great. I, I, I think it's a great improvement. Great. And I think most of the changes are are, are minor, right. like you okay. said, like that. So um, unless you'd like to grace us with your presence again, um, James, it would be nice maybe if Cassidy presented the next one to the board. Are you comfortable with that? Sure. That'd be great. Good. That's awesome. Good. I'll make the motion to table this until next meeting. I second the motion. All those in favor? Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. In all cases. Have a good night. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Cassie gets yeah. three meetings in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Abatement. The, <laughs> the fun stuff. All right. Good evening. Um, Okay, the first one is a personal property abatement for York Hospital, account number 693. Uh, the personal property account referenced above was listed as taxed and being taxed in error in accordance with uh, Maine 36 MRS 652-1K, property leased by and solely used for its purpose as a licensed hospital is not eligible for taxation. Um, so as a result, we are looking to abate them $1,612.58. Any questions? 
I'll make a motion that we grant the abatement for four Dana Drive for the amount of $1,612.58. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, next one is a real estate abatement on map R36, lot 4-11, 11 Pine Hill Mobile Home Park. Uh, the taxpayer filed an abatement request and inspection stating that the property was overvalued based on its condition. Uh, upon a physical inspection, it was determined that the property above reference had interior damage which affected the valuation. Adjustments have been made for the water damage and minor interior defects. As a result, it is recommended the valuation be adjusted uh, by $1,200 from $39,800 to $38,600 resulting in an abatement of $21.98. I'll make a motion that we grant the abatement for 11 Pine Hill Mobile Home Park for the amount of $21.98. Second the motion. All those in favor? Uh, next one, there's another personal property um, abatement for account number 1016, 12 Sullivan Street. Uh, the personal property account referenced <coughs> above was taxed inconsistently with, inconsistently with local practice for equipment valued under $10,000. The taxable equipment was valued at $2,213, which is under the $10,000 limit. Uh, the remaining business equipment is not taxable under the main business equipment tax exemption um, for personal property. So due to that, Inconsistency, we're recommending that they get an abatement of $40.54. I'll make a motion to grant to abatement Second. to 12 <laughs> Sullivan Street for the amount of $40.54. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, next one is a real estate at map R35, lot 19-1, 46 Hubbard Road. The subject parcel has a single-family home and a tiny home on the property. The taxpayer felt the taxes had increased excessively this year. After invest investigation, it was found that the tiny home was being taxed twice as an outbuilding and also as a second home on the property. Um, we deleted that outbuilding, which reduced the value by $42,000 from $392,800 to $350,800. It is recommended that an abatement in the amount of $769.44 be granted. I'll make a motion to grant the abatement to 46 Hubbard Road in the amount of $769.44. Okay. No second, second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, the last one is a real estate uh, account, map R23, lot 2, 185 Hubbard Road. Subject parcel is a recently constructed, reconstructed single family home. The new home was measured incorrectly. Upon inspection, it was determined that the measurement needed to be revised. Additionally, the taxpayer demonstrated that the property acreage was also incorrect on the record. Uh, the acreage was revised. We recommend an abatement of, um, to reduce the value by 116300 from 508800 to 393500 and issue an abatement in the amount of $2,130.62. I'll make a motion to grant the abatement to 185 Hubbard Road in the amount of $2,130.62. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Have Thank a happy you, Thanksgiving. Thanks. Thank you. Have Thanks. a good Thanks. evening. Thanks. <laughs> I was going to say, should, should I call for a... <laughs> no, it's just, just thinking. <laughs> when did, when Lost it. Have a good evening. Second public comment. There you go. My name is Jenny Fall. I'm a resident of Berwick, and I've lived here for close to 40 years now. Address? Nine Worcester Road, Berwick, Maine. Was there something else I have to get? Nope, that's nope, it. That's name and address. address. 
I want to make the community aware that there is a threat in the community that's preying on boys between the ages of 10 to 14. The predator is also a minor, but an older minor. The predator is getting children from the wreck field to join this gang in town. And the children that are being targeted are young boys. They are brought to this predator. They are instructed to go through their parents' house to find out what medications, if they smoke weed, if they have shrooms or any other illicit substance. They are instructed to steal some of it and bring it back to the headquarters where all of the children are forced to partake in doing this, smoking drugs or taking drugs, and if they don't, they get physically accosted. Sorry. These, co these children are preteen. Brain development isn't all there, and they're all hormonal. They're being sexually abused by this person. They are being physically abused by this person. They are being manipulated by this person. They are pitting parents against each other. They are going into parents phones and changing contact information so that parents don't have any idea what's going on. They are walking the streets at night. I really strongly encourage parents not to let their young boys go to the rec field unattended by super supervision by an adult. I know of at least eight boys in this circle right now that are experiencing this, and it is my job to make certain that the boys in this community are safe, because my son is one of them. I don't know what the town can do, but I am fighting a battle right now to save my son. So I would like everybody to be on high alert, because these children should not be experiencing this and I've lived here for 36 years of my life. I played at that rec field when I was a kid. I played softball there. I brought my child there. He's played t-ball all the way through. And now he's in a crisis unit. I'm sorry that I'm so emotional. But I don't have my son this Thanksgiving because of this. And I don't know what can be done. I know there's already cameras at the rec field. I know this. They're breaking into people's houses as well. In vehicles. I can't even tell you the ages of these boys are age. The youngest that I know of right now is 10. Showed up on my doorstep at 1 a.m. in the morning this morning. She was there with me. Two boys that this predator, who is still a minor, so at this point feels untouchable because even though there's law has been notified and things, nothing's happening and it continues. That fight that happened down in front of the town hall that my son was involved in, I was told it was all due to racial because my son is biracial. Come to find out, the leader of this gang correlated that entire thing because the victim of that fight used to be one of that person's little boys. But that little boy didn't continue to do what that person wanted, so she sucked. She, she unleashed her other little boys after that child. And I am ashamed now that I know what's really going on. I am ashamed that my son had any part in that. But at the same time, he is not, he is 12. He will not be 13 until June. This boy has been subjected to things when I thought he was going to the rec field to watch baseball games of his friends. People want to blame me that why didn't the parent not know what's going on. That's why I am alerting all the parents in this town. 
there is a danger field out there and these kids are getting hurt really bad. And I'm sorry that I'm yelling. I am just very emotional over this. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, go ahead. Can I? Can, <coughs> one, thank you for coming. But you so said. you have a question? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, just for clarification. You did I know. I was told I wouldn't get questions. No, I, uh, I, I, I told you that. This is a serious, 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 serious right. issue. I'm just curious, you, you're bringing this up. Um, have you been in, you confirmed you have been in contact with the police department? There's an event. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. But I just want to make sure that they're aware. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. My son went to crisis on Friday for saying he was going to slit his wrist. And I'm sorry, at 12 years old, that is not when you should be introduced to the stuff that that child has been introduced to. Any other public comment? Any other business, non-agenda items? Actually, I'm curious. Is there such a thing as a neighborhood watch? Um, I know that. Can you go up to the yeah, podium so we can hear you? <laughs> <laughs> is there such a thing as um, a neighborhood watch? I know that um, I'm actually from a different town, and there they have um, neighborhood watch type things set up. Um, and also they actually make... Um, high schoolers and their parents sort of sign an agreement that if you're at someone's house, um, a parent would not knowingly allow underage drinking, um, sort of things like that. I don't know if that would be a school-based program or a town-based. Yeah. That would be something that would go through the school. And as for a neighborhood watch, um, as far as the town, we have the police. Right. You know, the neighborhood watch would be something that the, the community would organize on their own, oh, right. okay. separate from the town. Okay. Uh, as far as right now, I don't think there is anything specific, but okay. the town is always welcome to, to do yeah. one. Neighbors, helping neighbors exactly. would be a lovely um, idea, I think, in this um, situation. Can we get your name and address, please? Of course. I'm Crystal Moody. And your address? 18 School Street. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other business? I have something. Um, on December 5th, there is a BMV training in Sanford 2 to 4 that I feel is very important for my staff to attend. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to close customer service from 1.30 to 5. It's a Tuesday. It's our slowest day of the week. From 1.30 to 5? Mm -hmm. And what's the date? Uh, December, December 5th. 5th. So I'll make a motion that we close customer service December 1.30 to 5. I will second the motion. <laughs> I just ask that we put it up on the website. Make sure it gets up yep. on the website yeah. when we close. Yep. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, yeah, the we're, we're gonna we're gonna have a parade before we meet again. Is there anybody going to the parade? Anybody gonna be part of it? I'll be with the Girl Scouts. Have a good night, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be walking with the Girl Scouts. So, um, good night. Anything else? Um, joint meeting. And joint month. meeting. If yes. Anybody from the public has anything that they would like us to discuss about land use ordinances? Then please. And and of course they can come to the joint meeting yes. as well. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to do a public comment or anything? Or? We, yeah. We, okay. okay. Um, so that is on Wednesday. Or no, the 29th. Yep. Wednesday. The, Wednesday the 29th. Here. It'll be in this room. It'll be in the auditorium. auditorium. There's actually a board of appeals meeting the same night. So okay. All right. Um, so, yes, November 29th, Wednesday, 6.30, joint meeting. Town is welcome. It's the planning board and the select board. The December 1st is the tree lighting. And December 2nd is the town parade, the holiday parade. Um, Before that, there's Thanksgiving. Yes, I was, <laughs> I was getting to that one. Um, yes, 
skipping to Christmas. Thursday. <laughs> no, I never skipped to Christmas. I always go to the last minute. <laughs> Thursday is Thanksgiving. Everybody should have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Um, don't fry your turkeys unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> don't ruin my department's holiday, too. <laughs> um, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, indeed.